the European Banking Authority, you remember, they released their reports uh, saying that any financial institution in Europe is highly discouraged from using Bitcoin until there's a, a strong regulatory infrastructure built around it. Yeah. And um, and the European Commission has decided, you know, to act on the suggestion from the EBA and actually go after the regulations. And gotcha. while it's not speci- while there's like no specifics yet, um, or from what I know, there's from everything I know, there's no specifics yet. But it it is going to be things like um, know your customer and any money laundering, things like that. So it, you know, it'll probably be similar to bit okay. license. Yeah, so it, it sounds like the governments are really starting to realize how how important it is for them to try and regulate this, or else they, you know, or else they totally get left in, left in the dust. They would rather try and co-opt it into their own system than let it, you know, thrive on its own and potentially overtake them a few years down the road. So they're trying to get out and uh, ahead of this and. Yeah, they're probably going to take the same approach as New York um, down the line. Um, but, you know, I, I, I talked with Eric Voorhees um, earlier this week in my interview with him about, you know, the impact of regulations and specifically the ones coming out of New York potentially. And, you know, we basically came to the conclusion that, you know, we should – as Bitcoin community members, we should try and engage with the regulators a little bit, try and get the laws changed to make them better when they actually come out. Um, But at at the end of the day, there's a good chance they might not even make any changes to them, and the regulations will still be pretty damaging to the ecosystem. And, but if that happens, people can just keep building their own businesses, their own programs, uh, their own tools for digital currency, and basically screw New York. Uh, we're just going to keep doing what we want. And there's ways for people to um, go around the regulations, whether you're outside of New York or inside. There are tons of technological ways to still do all the things you want to do relating to digital currency. Um, just you know, do it under the table if New York doesn't like the specific thing that you're doing for whatever reason. So, you know, yeah. yeah, I really think Eric hit the nail on the head there because he said, he said, you know, we should be trying to communicate with these regulatory agencies, um, but we shouldn't be trying too hard because, yes. you know, because there's always a chance that we might make some progress uh, in, in those legal channels, but most likely not. And mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it's all going to come down to developing ways to work around those restrictions instead of actually trying to change them. And I think that, that you, this might be off topic, but I think that, you know, gives us a little bit of insight into where the Bitcoin Foundation is going, you know, because now they're all about talking to regulatory agencies and governments and they're not really accomplishing anything. Yeah. So, yeah. I, so I think, yeah, I think, um, Eric definitely is spot on with saying that. Yeah, yeah, he has a great perspective, and and I think he's um, he has a really good handle on the situation, and you know what the ecosystem uh, can do, what it should do uh, to fight regulations. Um, but yeah, you you bring up a pretty good point about the Bitcoin Foundation. Like these these guys have been you know trying to work with regulators since their inception basically um you know that was that was kind of one of their points for existing like they collect all these you know f- membership fees from the bitcoin businesses who want to join the foundation as silver members or or whatever and then the foundation can use these funds to number 1 uh kickstart bitcoin development which we haven't seen anything happen <laughs> on that front from the foundation so um and then and then number two like they can i don't know use that money to for as lobbying lobbying efforts to to uh you know lobby politicians you know like a month ago they hired a brand new lobbying agency to to advocate on their behalf in washington dc so that cost a lot of money um 
but you know now we we actually see like you know regulations like on paper proposed regulations coming from a uh, you know a state in the United States the financial hub of the entire world and they're horrible <laughs> They're just <laughs> freaking terrible. Like it's 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 all bad. And then the Bitcoin Foundation sees it too, and, and and people in the foundation are like, "Wow, these these are pretty bad. We need to. This is, you know, it violates privacy. We, It'll we need kill to talk businesses." To New York State government about this. <laughs> yeah, like weren't they doing that already? Yeah, I don't. I no, I don't understand. I wish you know, maybe maybe I'll try and contact maybe a couple of foundation members and see if I can get them on the podcast to do an interview or something, maybe try and explain to me and someone in the community about, you know, like how, how come the bit license regulations are so horrible when, you know, the foundation, one of the main foundation's main goals is getting good regulations. So I, I don't understand what happened there. It seems like a complete failure on their part. And they, yeah, they, they actually did a recent rebranding of their, of their entire like website, you know, redesigned it. They have a new logo as well. Um, and it, it, it just seems like they're, they're trying to save face for the, for their most recent failure of getting pretty shitty regulations potentially on the books. You know, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. It's just like, it, it, if I could talk to somebody from the Bitcoin foundation, I'd just be like, no, you, it's, you're not getting anything done. Like, help the community work around these regulations instead of tr trying to beg for mercy from the governments because you're not going to get it. Like, just, uh -huh. Uh -huh. you know, like, actually do something worthwhile. And it's something else Eric said that was, I thought was really interesting that I hadn't even thought of uh, was that if these if these proposed regulations become law you know not only would the bitcoin economy in new york be really locked down but new york could actually become you know a dead zone because yeah. not not only do these would these laws apply to businesses in new york but if if there is a business outside of new york but has customers in new york they basically have then, to comply. Then they have to follow those. They have to follow those regu re regulations. Like I'm, like that's correct, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, if because because if you have a customer in New York who wants to buy even just like ten dollars worth of Bitcoin from your business, um, you know that's that's a that's a consumer, you know, by the government's definition, and that's somebody somebody that needs protection according to the perspective of the government. So yeah, that so business what, has to comply. So what Eric said about that was really interesting because, um, you know, he said that could like that could effectively turn New York into a Bitcoin dead zone because you would have these businesses who operate outside of New York but might have customers who live in New York, that, and they want to buy something from that company, but the company sees that they're from New York and you know they turn them away. They say we're not yeah. going to do business with you because we can't afford to comply with all these regulations. Yep, and. And you know, like, like, great job, Bitcoin Foundation. <laughs> like, like you've done all these like government talks, like all around the world with all these regulatory agencies, and you know, this is what it's accomplished. Like, we've got Bit License from New York, and if it becomes law, it could be, you know, it's going to be devastating potentially for the New York Bitcoin economy. Yeah, it'll be devastating for New York mainly. So, like, if you're one of those customers who lives in New York and you want to buy ten dollars worth of Bitcoin from Coinbase, or you, you want to, I don't know, do whatever you want with Bitcoin, um, those companies are just gonna not allow anyone with an IP address from New York. They're not gonna allow those people to use the service. So, if you're living in New York, that sucks for you <laughs> you can't participate in this brand new financial system that's been invented you know with the help of computer programmers and and cryptography uh you just won't be able to use it the rest of us will basically be fine we can keep using those services it's it's just gonna be you know an extra hassle for those businesses to turn away those new york customers they're gonna lose money from that too and then new york specifically they're they're not they're not going to be able to participate at all. So, yeah, that's I think the road that, that, in, that we can go down if if those regulations pass. Yeah, I I think if this happens in New York, um, 
obviously there won't be any new exchanges. I think what is that New York based exchange called? It's called ItBit, right? Yeah, ItBit is Something in New like York. Coinsider yeah, they're, they're is pretty also much in New York. And there's a couple like others the exist, too, I think. The existing uh, businesses are, you know, pretty much already compliant cuz I'm sure they've kind of saw this coming for a while anyways. Right. You know, but you know, of course there's not going to like no new businesses are going to be able to come up and um and like larger exchanges like Coinbase or Bitstamp or something who operate outside of New York but would have to be compliant if they have New York customers, you know, they're going to cut off their um customer service and their service in general in New York. So thing I think things like uh more decentralized routes of Bitcoin buying and selling like local bitcoins are really going to take off in mm. New York. Um but you know that's not really all that great either cuz that's going to that would make it a lot harder to buy and sell bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah. It'll it'll set the industry back by you know at, at least a year I think. Um in terms of just the maturity of the system and, and being able to, it it it, it kind of it, it centralizes it in in a way, um, not the overall system, but just you know buying the buying and selling aspects. If you want to use a major exchange which is license compliant or whatever, so it it'll it'll set it'll set the ecosystem back a little bit, um, but yeah, we can we can we can get around it. It'll just slow it down. Bitcoin is still going to the moon eventually it's just a matter of how fast and when we get there 